Ladies and gentlemen, Splatterpunk here. We are ready to go through, yet again, Alan Wake. I've streamed this game at least three or four times, I want to say. And I have yet to beaten it. Beat it. Whatever. Proper English. Uh, and I've had at least three or four weeks out of, uh where I haven't uploaded anything. So I figured, what the hell, I gotta get back into it. So tonight, it is uh, 9 o'clock now. I'm gonna see how far I can get into this game. Now this is gonna, this is streaming on Twitch and this is also gonna go out on my YouTube channel probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, spread it out just so I have something else to show other than more Resident Evil. But, we're gonna go through. Uh, so if you hear me talking to people, I'm not crazy, I promise. So, alright, we're gonna go on to normal difficulty. And just get right into it. Stephen King once wrote that nightmares exist outside of logic, and there's little fun to be had in explanations. They're antithetical to the poetry of fear. In a horror story, the victim keeps asking why, but there can be no explanation, and there shouldn't be one. The unanswered mystery is what stays with us the longest, and is what we'll remember in the end. My name is Alan Wake. I'm a writer. I've always had a vivid imagination, but this dream unsettled me. It was wild and dark and weird, even by my standards. So yes, it began with a dream. As stereotypical horror stories are wont to do. Following a typical nightmare pattern, I was late, desperately trying to reach my destination, a lighthouse. For some urgent reason, I couldn't remember. I've been driving too fast down a coastal road to get there. I'd seen the hitchhiker too late. He was dead. I was convinced they put me in jail and I would never see Alice again. And here's where the freaky shit starts. Sudden, his body was gone. Eps in shock from the crash. I could hardly stand my feet. Yeah, uh, the sound is kind of low. I'm gonna fix that in just a moment. So, just give me a sec. Let me, uh... Let me crank up that noise. Just a little. Just a little. Let's go to 75. Alright. There we go. Oh, one sec. Alright, there's a little bit of an issue where, for some reason, uh... The mouse is still appearing on my screen, but it's not showing up for you guys, I don't think, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, let's go to options... Subtitles, video commentary, statistics... No, that's not it. Uh... Zoom to menu oh well I'll just I'll just deal with the mouse pointer you guys uh you guys could go through it all right look up the light no all right there we go hold down left button to sprint and I'm not running into the deadlights misc all right controls roughly is how I remember it to all right I had to go to the lighthouse. I knew there was something important waiting for me there. I very important. Now, uh, to keep the game, um, to keep the game okay. Oh. Oh, shit. You don't even recognize me, do you, Ryder? You think you're God? You think you can just make up stuff? Play with 
people's lives and kill them when you think it adds to the drama. Well, that's not my plan, but oh shit. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, as someone who writes as a hobby, that kind of... That's how I feel about myself! Alright. Missing. Uh, someone in the thing mentioned Art Critic Murderer. If I recall, there was an old Vincent Price movie. Oh no! How do I dodge? Alright, left button. Okay. Alright. Oh, okay, come on, dodge it. Oh, nope! I botched that one. I realized that the hitchhiker was a character from the story I've been working on. But, uh, yeah, there was a, a old Vincent Price horror movie. Uh, not quite as bad as it would feel to die in a, in a tornado, but, no, there was a, uh, I can't remember the Vincent Price, the name of the Vincent Price movie, The Life for the Life of Me, but the plot of it was, he was a Shakespearean actor on stage, he got a bad review, he went crazy, and was now hunting down all the other, like, not actors, but, like, hunting down the critics who made fun of his play. I, I'm trying to get there, but I can't really sprint very far. There we go. Oh no, the bridge. I don't I don't know who you are, Clay Stewart. Alright. Uh, I hope the sound is better now, guys. I like how they made that scene sh sufficiently horrific without needing to rely on any gore. Was trapped. There was no way out. This is like the least gory horror game I ever played. Yeah, uh, someone in the chat mentioned that this game was, um, this game is, uh, a, Alan Wake is worse at being Alan Wake than Deadly Premonition. Because this game, alright, both of the, both Alan Wake and Deadly Premonition. Oh, hello. Follow the light. Now we can run into the deadlights. Uh, both of these games were based on a TV series that... You should go into the light. You are only safe there. Yeah, that doesn't sound, you know, untrustworthy in the least bit. Uh, both games were based on a TV series called uh, Twin Peaks, which I've only watched season one of. I have something important to tell you. It goes like this. For he did not know that beyond the lake he called home lies a deeper, darker ocean green where waves are both wilder and more serene. To its ports I beam. To its ports I beam. Do you understand? No. Follow my light. Uh, I certainly don't know what it means, but both games were trying to be, uh, uh, based on, uh, based on that, uh... Your dream to teach you. The darkness is dangerous. It's sleeping now. 
When it feels you coming, it will wake up. There's no time. I can only show you the most important thing. Uh, but... Whereas, uh, Deadly Premonition is straight up... The Hitchhiker has been taken over by the Dark Presence. You can't hurt him now. The darkness protects him from all harm. Only light can drive the darkness away and make him vulnerable again. Here, take the light. Alright, flashlight. Turn your flashlight toward him and burn the darkness away. There we go. You did it. Now the darkness no longer protects him, but it's still inside, controlling him. He can't be saved. He's still a threat. He is still your enemy. Here, take the gun. Take the now gun. Alright, there we go. Good. You've done well. Remember what I've taught you. That is all. I will give you back your dream now. Yes, thanks for leaving me in the middle of this nightmare. In the nightmare, a terrible darkness was taking over the world. The lighthouse was the last safe place on Earth. Anyway, to finish... Let's grab more ammo. Uh, so, whereas this game is based on Twin Peaks in a little bit, like it's inspired by it, um, flat out, uh... <laughs> Flat out, Deadly Premonition was trying its hardest to be Twin Peaks. Um, which, but with weird combat in it. Alright. Oh, wait, hit the wrong button. There we go. Uh, it was trying its hardest to be Twin Peaks. Um,. And which is is fine. I, from what I saw of season one, I really like Twin Peaks. Uh, would I necessarily watch it? This, you know, what watch it the whole way through? Particularly since people have told me that season. Uh, oh shit! Apparently, season two becomes a uh, horrific train wreck. All right. Oh god, that red light's bright. So. All right, where's he coming from? Oh, that's not that bad. Oh, all right, he could just fall off the cliff. That works too. All right. Oh shit, I could fall off the cliff too. That that was dumb of me. Oh, that was. Oh god, this is a great start to a potentially eight-hour stream. All right. Uh, I like the idea of... I definitely appreciate what they did with... There we go. He's dead. Uh... Where does it come from? Oh, hi. There we go. Yeah, I'm not great at talking. What can I say? Um I can keep this up. For I I can say I'm not a huge fan of the uh of the constant modulation of the voice. I would rather they had kept one clean, distinct, otherworldly thing for the voice rather than constantly doing having the modulation go up and down. Alright. I'm just trying to... How far away is it? Oh, it's pretty far back. Alright. Someone in the chat, it's like you take five minutes to finish a sentence. It's because I'm A, focusing on the game, and B, I don't want to over-talk the, char the characters that are in the game in case they're focusing on the plot. I always like was that um God can't even talk straight. 
I always did like how this is the first game I played that was a horror game that wasn't trying to be Resident Evil in a way. And definitely wasn't trying to go, oh, how do we do horror? We run it like it's Evil Dead too, with all, you know, with blood spraying out of the walls and gore everywhere. This very much goes for a, like, like a downturned kind of evil. Shh, baby, just another nightmare. Everything's fine. This I'm game has sorry. aged pretty right. well. Anything more than dozed off would be news for everyone. Cheer up, handsome. We're here. Like, it's not the prettiest. It hasn't aged quite as well as Silent Hill 2 did. Silent Hill 2 looks beautiful today. But this game has aged, I want to say, pretty well. Um. And, ah, oh God. I absolutely love that look of the town. I don't know why. It's just a nice kind of comfy feel. Is there any way to really explain it? I l not enough games take place in small towns that actually look and feel like a small town. It's like, oh, we're taking a game, take, uh, is taking, oh. Let's act like we're on vacation. Go stand next to that old gentleman there. I want a shot of you with the town in the background. <laughs> sure. I'll even give you a title for the shot. A city boy. Moments before he got eaten by a bear. Hi. Hello there. You picked a good time to visit our town. Deerfest is just two weeks away. Deerfest, huh? Did you hear that, honey? Yeah, the Deerfest point I really like, actually. I'm Pat Main, by the way. Nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm Alan Wake. I won't pretend I don't recognize a famous writer such as yourself, Mr. Wake. A pleasure. I'm an avid reader myself. I hope this isn't too presumptuous of me, but... I'm the night host at the local radio station. Any chance that I get an interview? Look, Mr. Maine, I'm on vacation. In fact, I'd appreciate it if we could keep my being here just between the two of us. I'm sure you understand. Fair enough. You can trust me to be Mr. Maine. Not a hard man to track down if you change your mind, though. I hope you two have a lovely holiday. Like, that's a quality I really like about this game, is this guy feels like a a character. He doesn't feel like a, oh, I'll say these three lines and leave it to that. He, and we'll be hearing from him on the radio throughout the co course of this whole game. You know, uh, like, I, I kind of would have loved to see if he gave the interview. But, no, that town is just beautiful to me. I absolutely love that look. Um, you know, uh, this is our wife, Alice. Oh, and it's him. I love this guy. Yeah. Barry. Are the locals giving you trouble? Just say the word, and I'll hop on a plane and come make sure that you're left alone, Al. No, Barry, we're fine. Great. Great. Just want to make sure you have relax and recharge. So, how is the place? Has it gotten your creative juices flowing? Barry, we're just settling in. Okay, Al. I'll call back later to make sure you're doing okay. And you call me if there's a problem, okay? Okay. Just looking out for you, buddy. Talk to you later. I love you too, Barry. You know he's going to be calling you Let's every see who five has the last Barry is Barry. I can okay, this guy is obviously evil. Text message from Barry. He says hi to you too. I'm not sure if you guys noticed it, but this guy was going and see who has the last laugh, city boy. Mm. You know, uh and someone mentioned that uh like, every video game now, if they have a normal protagonist, they, I guess normal means having a badass backstory, like Elite SWAT Cop for five years. Like, that Juku has a point there. Um, the thing... He, Come the, on, Slowpoke. You get the full service here. I've made all the arrangements. I drive the car. I'll even carry the bags. All you have to do is drag your cute butt into the car and enjoy the ride. Yeah, sounds like you've got a lazy bastard for a husband. <laughs> yeah, but I got a thing for him. Come on, you lazy bastard. Let's go. These two actually feel like a couple as well. 
Um... We need to stop at the local diner to get the cabin key from the landlord. A uh, Mr. Carl Stuckey. He's waiting for us. God, Stuckey. <laughs> I can't help but love that name. I'll go fill her up while you get the key. I'll pick you up here in, say, 15 minutes. Sure. You could also tell that this game, though, Thank you for coming definitely had, like, to get its budget, had to do some product placement. You see the Microsoft Sync logo in the car. All the batteries in this game are Duracell batteries. Still places like this. Towns where everybody knew everybody. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake. Alan Wake. Oh, God! I am your biggest fan. I know people say that all the time, but I really am. I'm glad to hear that. Rose. Rose. I'm looking for Mr. Stuckey. Carl Stuckey? Carl? Of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. I can't believe it. I got all of your books. I got the cutout from the bookstore when they took it out of the window. <laughs> and to keep it here. Well, okay. Good for you. Uh, right. So much for a quiet vacation. I do, like... Try the coffee. Just don't blame me when you fall in love. Because it'll break your heart when you have to leave. Rusty here is no longer human. Nothing but black coffee under a thin layer of skin. Yeah, that makes two of us. Like, every single bit of this... This feels like a diner in my whole, whole town. There was a place called the Deer Crossing in, uh, in the town I grew up in, Chestertown. It... You're not really having a conversation with me, by the way, lady. You're more just talking to yourself while I'm gushing about this diner and its design. Um, if you want, I get off work at six. Thanks, Rose. We'll be sure to keep that in mind. Like, I'm sorry, I don't. Like, I'm not from the Pacific Northwest, so the but I'm from the Adirondacks, so the mountains and all that. This this game reminds me way too much of my hometown. I'm sorry. I think that's part of the reason why. By no means is it a great game. But I really like it. And these two. I could really use a tune right now. Coconut number six in the jukebox. I'd do it myself, but both of my legs have gone to sleep. Bad circulation. Yeah. Are you serious? Coconut again? <laughs> you disgust me. Call yourself a rocker. Unbelievable. Ha! Oh god, these two. You put the lime in the coconut, drink them both up. Just because we're brothers, don't it think does I that. won't Get murder stuck. you in your yeah. sleep. You need to give it a good solid whack. There we go. <laughs> yes, that's my favorite tune. Coconut. Now that's what I'm talking about, yes. This is it. I've died and gone to hell. <laughs> I don't know why, just... Uh, now we get this crazy lady. Don't go in there, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. I think I can handle it, ma'am. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to find Stucky. To get the key and get out as soon as possible. The waitress was giving me a headache. Overeager fans always did. And there we go. Let's progress the plot. Hello? I just, I had to gush about the diner, I'm sorry. Mr. Stuckey? And now we get the evil... Oh! Couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. So Stress on the taken. I instructions on how to get to the lake. Okay. I wish you a good stay in my cabin. I'll come by later to check how you've settled in. And to meet your wife. I insist. Thanks. It's a pr they. It's weird how in the trailer she looks pure evil, whereas here she just looks like someone on her way to a funeral. Golden Lake is a special place, very inspiring. Whereas in the in that CGI cutscene, she looks like the devil. <laughs> you got lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. This really ought to be fixed, and then I must remind Sarah to change the lights at the station. It's been too long already. Even that sounds better than your singing. Are you all right? <laughs> Splendid, 
splendid. <laughs> Damn hungry. It swells up like a balloon if I lift anything heavier than a spoon. Yeah, splendid, splendid. It's been a long time, Tom. Good to see you. Hey, you wouldn't have to have a bottle on you, would you, Tom? I wish. <laughs> Uh, the Andersons, they're uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. They wandered off from his clinic at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. Well, I hope they have a good time, regardless of what happens. Uh, and we're done here, thank God. I'm afraid... Mission accomplished. The key and the directions. My hero. I got some flashlights, just in case. Hey, wait! Mrs. Wake! Your... Your keys! Oh, no! But no, this... The diner was a real nut house. <laughs> like, I'm gonna talk over the cutscene, because fuck it. This whole town... Can you believe this place? This would make a wonderful setting for a book. Yeah. We're supposed to be on vacation, Alice. I'll figure it out when we get back. This home. whole area okay. just reminds me way okay. too much of where I'm from. Like it this is you. like not quite where I live has have you driving on top of mountains and stuff like that. But if you saying. ever have the chance, look into the Adirondack State Park. It is a beautiful, beautiful place. I hadn't been able to write a word in two years. Not since my last book. This this game just does something to me. I don't know why. Like I think this game doesn't get enough credit. Is it a great game? No. Deadly Premonition does a better job of trying to be the Twin Peaks the video game. But I really like this game. Something all right. Don't worry, honey. I'll get you inside safe and sound before it gets dark. And I've got the flashlight. 